we're back. What, what year is it? Hello, Doodlebugs. It's Mary, and it's your art this month. I'm going to go over some of your artwork from our previous theme back in December, as well as announce March's theme and how you can participate. But first, uh, let's do a little art discussion here. So it's been a little while since our last Your Art This Month video, but we got a comment on that one from Rebecca Green saying, I used to be a pretty good artist in school, but college life kind of got in the way and I quit drawing for a while. Now I can't seem to draw complex pieces with the same quality that I used to. I'm trying to remember the basics and get back into the groove. I'd be happy to hear any advice from veteran artists in my position or newbies who are into the basics that I want to remember. And on that comment thread, there was a lot of great discussion and advice. I would like to throw in my input. And that is that it is very easy to imagine your art as a steadily increasing graph from bad to good. Where in actuality, it's gonna be a graph showing peaks and valleys. There's gonna be ups and downs. I feel like it's a disservice to imagine that there is a finish line to learning art or learning anything. You can never master it all. And even when you do master it all, let's say, you're gonna maintain that mastery? No, it's gonna take practice over and over again every day. And you're gonna have some off time. You should have some off time. You should step away from it every now and then. This is something that resonates with me right now. I, as you may have noticed, I've been going through some peaks and valleys with creation, whether it's videos and art, and there's been a lot going on in the background. We never talk anymore. Wait, you're not Dante. So have patience with yourself. It's a part of the process. You're gonna go through cycles of building your skills, exercising those creative muscles, and feeling great about it. And then you're gonna get lazy and eat pizza and hang out on the couch for a few months. And then you're gonna be like, wow, I've really fallen out of shape. Gotta get back at it. Just gotta get back at it. Okay, let's move on to your art this month. When we last left off, the theme was self-portrait. Over the last few years, I've been doing self-portraits every New Year's to just reflect and get deep and all that gooey stuff. And the self-portraits that came out of this theme were amazing. I feel like personally, these pieces that I was seeing, they had so much personality in there. I feel like I really did get a sense of the people who are making them. So let's dive in. Night Owl at Flight did a self-portrait of probably what they see the most, what a lot of us see the most is our own hands and blank pages before us. And the washy style of this is so Cool. I see a lot of muted colors and black and white pieces in this series, which is a very interesting thread if you think about it. Anshi Hoop did a self portrait in a lovely style. I love the colorings, the mermaid vibe. I don't know if that was meant to be, but I looked at it first and was like, is this a self portrait of you as Ariel? Intimate piece too with the demons in the jars. I mean, the underwear as well, but the demons in the jars, I think um, it's very witchy. Emily Mlao 29 once again featured because it's a very interesting take on a self-portrait. A self-portrait doesn't necessarily have to be your face as the artist. They went for a lettering that represents them. It's very minimal, it's simple. It's an image that the artist chose for the audience to see as themselves. Let's think about it. Vincenzo Jose did a split self-portrait of themselves and a robot. Interesting that the line art of this piece is very clean, very precise, almost as if a robot drew it. Connection, connecting the dots, I sure am. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. What do you think? Make a decision now. Artist the Martyr did a self-portrait in a beautiful style, showing a lot of skill and technique. Again, it's one of those things where you consider what was chosen to be included, details like the t-shirt there, and the style itself, it seems very physically accurate. And then you have this aura, this surreal effect around the character. Solus Felice chose to do a very unique composition. There's a lot that's hidden in this, and then there's also a lot of open, empty, negative space. This one fascinates me, just it's a mysterious self-portrait. Very good. Very good. Gal for me made a self-portrait. This is great surrealism. This kind of like gives me a Dali vibe in the way that there's one foot in something very realistic. And then there's another foot in just dreamland. Our spoodles is 
clearly very skilled and talented in making names for their Instagram account, Spoodles, and in drawing and illustrating using these patterns, a lot of technical skill. It's just so phenomenal. The circle atomic. It's very atomic. Am I just gonna turn into a crazy art teacher and just give like weird one word descriptions of your pieces? This is beautiful. Atomic. Matt crazy. You get a sense of something that should be colorful, but it's a bit muted, except for the eyeball. That's the most saturated piece of color that you see in the piece. The eye that is staring directly into the viewer. Mmm, soul piercing. This piece is by Enemy by MJV. There's this repetitive uh, image of the sunglasses and things that are coming through it. The eyes are covered on the person, but then you get these monsters coming out of the lenses of the shades. I get the sense that uh, this is still water that runs deep. Miloritz made uh, I'm a piece I'm so very jealous of. I love this, this style. It feels like it could either be working out a character in a sketchbook or a very intentional piece of art, art. Again, it's black and white. For the most part, there's this pop of intense red though. It's very mischievous mischievous. King Kiet did a piece not of themselves literally, but of their space, their home life, which is an intimate portal into who is this person and how they live and present their items and their space. Space. Yet another two-toned piece. Soul Wolf 21 did a chibi self-portrait. I got to throw this one in here. It's adorable. Muted colors. Why are we all doing muted colors lately? And the inclusion of the little question mark. Mm. I'm totally charmed by the style. If I were to give this a word, it would be puzzle. And finally, IB Artistry did a marvelous self-portrait. This shows you got a lot of skill technical grasp on what you're doing here. And it's one of those self-portraits, again, where the eye contact is being made with the audience here. And there's something to be said about artists who can do a self-portrait that steps more into the realism side of things, whereas myself, I'd prefer to do something cartoonish or more symbolic. If I were to give this one a word, it would be glowing, glowing, just the, the white highlights of it is just, uh, mwah. And that was your art for the month of December. If you wanna check out more pieces, because that was not all of them, you can look at the hashtag YATM on Instagram. And for March, we are going to do a brand new theme. Are you ready? Are you sure you're ready? I'm ready. Get your ready pants on. Now take them off, because where we're going, you don't need pants. The theme for March is 1950. Thanks, Chelsea Cakes, for the suggestion. The theme is 1950, whatever that inspires you to make. It could be a drawing, a painting, a sculpture, a, a dance, who knows? And it doesn't literally have to be the year. It could be a person from that year. It could be something inspired by a song or it, anything, anything. It's just a leaping off point. Let's not take it too seriously. The deadline for this month will be March 28th. So you can make whatever it is you like. And if you want to share them, you can post them to Instagram. Be sure to hashtag it YATM and tag me at Mary Doodles to make sure that I see it. And you might be featured in the next Your Art This Month video. My hands are showing you how open the possibilities are. And before I go, just a couple things to plug. Uh, we got a dog. I guess that's not a plug. I guess that's a humble brag. But if you want to see cute, adorable pictures of that dog, she's got an Instagram account now. There's some pictures up there and she's really cute. Ugh. And for those of you who want to get more into my personal life, I have a secret private Instagram account that's not really secret, secret nor private. And as always, if you have any thoughts, questions, comments, ideas for future themes, leave those in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching Doodlebugs. Toodles, doodles. A sign off from Yinky Dang. Yinky Dang. I'm gonna name my child Yinky Dang. <laughs>